We now have, uh, we're now on item seven, and it's a presentation from the Transportation Authority of Marin on existing Measure A, one half cent sales tax for transportation. And we have with us um, the president mm -hmm. of the of the Transportation Authority of Marin, Stephanie Moulton Peters. Um, we have the executive director of TAM, Diane Steinhauser, and we have the general manager of the, I'm not sure if that's your title, but it's a good one, uh, of the Marin Transit District. <laughs> Nancy Whelan. Good morning, yes. Madam Chair and members of the board. We're delighted to be here this morning. We know you have a busy morning, so we're going to go right through these slides. But we are here uh, as an informational presentation only. We've been making these to the cities and towns of Marin County where they've been well received. It's a little different because you all sit on the TAM board, so you're familiar with this project. So consider this a quick review of what Measure A accomplished and where we're going in the future. You'll see uh, a few slides in our highly charged economy and heavy traffic situation. There's always more to do. We do have uh, some work ahead of us, and we'll talk about that and some of the work we've done to survey the community on their priorities for addressing our transportation and transit needs. And with that, I'll turn it over to our executive director, Diane Steinhauser. Thank you again. Good morning, President Arnold and members of the board. Uh, it's a pleasure being here this morning. I wanted to start out by illustrating your recently constructed traffic circle down here at the bottom of Peter Bear Drive. Congratulations on uh, making that project a reality. It's a new technology that we're looking forward to possibly seeing more of in Marin County. Uh, I'm going to do a very quick overview of our current setting. Uh, this uh, slide illustrates the Plan Bay Area forecast for employment uh, made about two years ago as part of the early technical work associated with Plan Bay Area 2040. It shows in Marin an increase over the next 30 years, uh, projected from 2010 to 2040, of 16,800 jobs. Well, lo and behold, between 2010 and 2015, we've already put 13,500 new jobs into Marin. Um, you can see this with respect to the traffic, both on our highways and our local roads. Um, we believe now in 2016 we're approaching over 14,000 new jobs. So we've achieved substantially what our already, what our 25-year estimate is going to be. Um, this is a quick slide uh, regarding um, housing, both single family and local uh, and multifamily units, uh, historical trends for housing here in Marin County. This is also provided uh, through MTCNA bag. Um, this is a um, uh, indication of an, another uh, element with respect to in commuting of labor. This is the uh, permits actually issued in each jurisdiction here in Marin County in the last RENA cycle. Uh, we're currently in the 2015 to 2022 cycle. Sometime in the next two years, each jurisdiction of Marin is going to become involved in updating their regional housing needs assessment and what they believe they can bring into the community in terms of households. But you can see here that the total permits issued uh, in that last RENA period was 32% of the total that was projected. Uh, so we're struggling to be able to build enough housing here in Marin for all of the labor that uh, we're creating and, and, and the needs that we have uh, through our business community. Uh, as a result, uh, we're seeing a significant rise in congestion. This is an uh, indication of, of what's happening on Marin Highway 101. We've seen between the recession and the 2009-10 period and now an over 150% rise in traffic congestion. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit now about funding. Our 20-year uh, uh, um, half-cent transportation sales tax originally estimated at about 19 million a year, is currently generating 25 million a year. So you can see that our strong economy is bringing more of that transportation sales tax into Marin. Uh, we also generate, through a 2010 vehicle registration fee, about 2.3 million a year from registered vehicles. Um, just as a perspective, um, those local funds and other local funds, including some local sales taxes at the city town level, as well as parcel fee for um, Marin Transit, generate about 72% of our income. This is a snapshot. 
from fiscal year 2014-15. You can see that federal funds were getting discretionarily through MTC's OBAG program about two to three million. On state funds, we're getting through the STIP about two million a year. That federal and state number 30 years ago was probably about 75%. Now, around the state, that's been replaced by local funds that have been generated to address transportation needs. The regional share here is what comes through the tolls, and, uh, and we are going to be talking more about an increase in tolls on the seven barrier toll bridges in the next six to ten months. Marin is a self-help county. Uh, we've added three counties back here in November. Again, due to the diminishment of state and federal funds, uh, many counties are turning to local fees and, and taxes. Uh, uh, we have 24 counties now statewide that have local transportation sales taxes. In the Bay Area, we, eight of our nine counties have local transportation sales taxes. Uh, Solano is the one county that does not. Um, we did receive, and, and this is part of the benefit of being a self-help county, some funding in recent S SB1 geared towards matching those counties that have their own transportation sales tax. Let's talk for a second about SB1. This chart on the right shows for the state's major road repair, state highways, how the needs have grown and how funding has not been able to keep pace. We hope to be able to present in the near future a similar chart, something being worked out collectively by our public works departments around the county as to how local street and road maintenance has grown on local roads as well. SB1 is addressing state uh, and local road maintenance and rehab. That is the primary goal and benefit associated with the recently passed SB1. Um, it has eligibility with respect to that maintenance and rehab uh, with in these categories here, road maintenance, safety, complete street components, etc. The uh, County of Marin is projected to receive $4 million a year uh, for uh, county roads out of the SB1 uh, recently passed legislation. Uh, Countywide, we're looking at about $8 million a year for all of Marin's jurisdictions. And Marin Transit and Golden Gate are going to receive some additional funding as well. Um, I now want to talk a little bit about what are current sales tax funds. We've been out educating our local jurisdictions and appreciate the opportunity to display this here to you in the audience of uh, what are the various features of our current sales tax. We're going to start with uh, local transit and I'm going to introduce Nancy Whelan who is going to uh, talk a little bit about um, about what is funded, our 55% share for transit. You betcha. Okay, thanks. Good morning, Pre President Arnold, uh, Nancy Whelan, General Manager, thank you, <laughs> for Marine Transit. Um, and I'm going to talk a little bit about what we're doing with Measure A. Uh, as you know, we're providing all the local public transit here in the county. We operate local fixed route service, uh, the West Marin Stagecoach. We provide ADA paratransit services and other services to our seniors. And we provide s transportation to, to schools. So we do a lot. And um, if we look back to 2004 when Measure A was passed, Marin Transit was facing significant sh shortfalls or cutbacks. We were looking at having to cut our service significantly. But since the passage of Measure A, we've actually been able <coughs> excuse me, to add 34% more service. Most recently in June of 2016, we added 19% more service, making more direct connections, adding service frequency, and adding uh, express routes. And those were things that all of our, our customers were asking for. Those were the areas they, they looked for service improvements. With the passive major A, we've been able to expand all of our key programs. We've, um, we're serving seniors, more seniors, more students, and, and the less densely populated areas of the county. Our annual operating budget is about $29 million, and Measure A provides about 40% of our annual operating revenue. State and federal sources account for about 25% of the operating revenue, and as Diane mentioned, we become increasingly dependent on our local sources, such as Measure A. So now let me briefly highlight some of the services we provide across the county, starting with our fixed route service, which is the largest share of our service. We operate 14 local bus routes, and that doesn't even include the supplemental school routes, which we'll talk about in a second. We, uh, our services are timed and coordinated with Golden Gate Transit Services. 
uh, their regional basic service, I should say, to provide service every 15 minutes, five days a week along the Highway 101 corridor, including Civic Center in the Northgate area. So basically, you can go to one of our bus pads during the week and get a, <coughs> a bus north or southbound uh, about every 15 minutes. Uh, local routes are also provided daily uh, every 15 minutes uh, through the canal, and it's 15 minutes between, between San Rafael and San Anselmo. We, we carry about 8,600 average weekday passengers on, on this service, so it is clearly one of the major congestion reducers that, that we have. Um, the next part of our service that we provide is to rural Marin. We sta stagecoach routes 61 and 68 uh, provide daily service to and from West Marin and carry an average of about 300 passengers a day. Flag stop service is provided along the western rural portions of the county and they allow passengers to get on and off at any location where it's safe for the driver to pull over. Additional service is provided on Route 61 during spring and summer weekends to uh, accommodate the, the many visitors that are uh, going to Mount Tam, Stinson Beach, and, and other recreation areas. We've all also offered two dial ride services to West Marin communities, uh, including a weekly service connecting Dillon Beach to Tamales and Pel to Petaluma, and a monthly service from Point Reyes Station to Nevada. They're basically focused on shopper services, pretty much a lifeline service and those are curb-to-curb -curb pickups and drop-offs that are open to the general public. As you know, we also provide uh, the Muirwood Shuttle uh, when Highway 1 is open, which we hear is now going to happen soon here in May. Uh, we, uh, last year we carried 124,000 passengers on Route 66 and 66F. That was about a 12% increase over uh, 2015. On average, 17% of all of the weekend and holiday visitors to the park arrive on the Muirwood Shuttle, so it's a very heavily used service. Um, we also have been noticing just through our surveys that people are using other modes to get to the bus as well. So we're, we're mo removing trips not only to the Muirwood using our shuttle, but people are getting there, not coming and parking at, at our shuttle stop. So, so that's been a, uh, a, an improvement that we've seen as well. Go ahead. Yeah, thanks. Uh, nearly 25% of all of our riders are under the age of 18. We offer nine transit routes that are scheduled to meet the bell times of schools as well as a discounted youth pass program. The youth pass allows unlimited travel on Marin, uh, Marin transit routes throughout the county, not on yellow bus, but uh, and th these, these passes cost $175 for six months or $325 for a year. In 2015-16, about 4,000 passes were distributed throughout the county and 94% of those were distributed for free to students who have an income qualified family. We started a new program in 2015 in partnership with College of Marin which enables college students to use a valid, valid college ID pass uh, as a pass, excuse me, to ride any local Marin transit bus at no additional cost and we're seeing about 500 College of Marin students use uh, the pass every day on our, our other our fixed route services. Uh, we support three yellow bus programs uh, serving eight schools in the county. About 3,000 one-way passes were sold in the 2016-17 year and um, as you know, the county also helped subsidize those three, three programs. So that's our student services. The last segment that I'd like to talk about is um, our, our service to seniors and people with disabilities. As you know, Marin County has been ranked the second healthiest county in California and its residents can expect to live longer than residents almost anywhere else in the country. Uh, as people live both longer <coughs> and healthier lives, uh, they need more than the basic life lifeline services. They're gonna need ways, they do need get ways to get around that are convenient, cost effective, and preferably don't involve driving. Uh, we try to meet these needs with a range of services uh, under the Marin Access brand and they include the ADA complimentary paratransit service, which is required by federal law. We have more than 125,000 paratransit trips provided in Marin County last year. Uh, we have, uh, as you can see, about 9,000 residents are registered as customers. Our taxi subsidy program is called Capture Ride, and where we, we offer same-day rides to uh, seniors and people who are paratransit eligible, and we subsidize those trips and we did about 16,000 trips last year. And lastly, uh, um, then we also, I'm sorry, support our volunteer driver programs called Star and Trip where we reimburse uh, volunteer drivers. And lastly, we provide information, uh, enrollment, counseling, and referrals on transportation for Marin seniors and people with disabilities through our Travel Navigators program. 
and the navigators received over 8,000 calls in this last fiscal year. So all the services I've been talking about have been uh, subsidized or, or funded in part by, by Measure A, and we're very reliant on it. Thank you. Thank you, Nancy. I'm, not, I'm now going to talk just very briefly about a, a major highway project that was also funded through the 2004 half-cent transportation sales tax. That was closing the gap on Highway 101 in our carpool lane system through San Rafael. If you remember prior to 2010 April when we opened the final leg of this facility over Port Suelo Hill, we had about a 3.2 mile gap between the 580 junction and Civic Center Drive. This chart just shows a little bit of the complexity associated with trying to fund a major highway project uh, here in Marin County. Again, with the small amount of state and federal funds that we get, something like uh, our local sales tax uh, was very instrumental in completing the project. That last segment of the project over there on the right, segment four, ended up with 17 different fund sources that we cobbled together in order to get that project built. That 25 million in local sales tax enabled me and the board to leverage over 50 million in grant funds that came to Marin to finish that project. Here's the before picture looking from the Coleman pedestrian overcrossing northward. Um, you can see the highway lane on the right, the multi-use path in the middle, and believe it or not, smart rail construction on the left side. The first mile of smart rail that was reconstructed in Marin was actually done as part of the highway project. We moved smart over 50 feet in order to make room for our class one bike path, uh, ending a hazardous condition of bikes traveling down uh, uh, down Lincoln, and then the carpool lane on the highway, one lane each direction. Um, our transportation sales tax funds local streets and roads. Uh, we've been able to contribute 13.25% um, of the measure, uh, over $3 million annually uh, since the uh, start um, of the sales tax back in 2004. Uh, here's a brief breakdown of the various funds that are distributed to our cities and towns. These funds are granted to each jurisdiction at the beginning of the fiscal year for you to decide exactly what transportation element that you want to spend those funds on. To date, the county rec has received about 8.9 million through fiscal year 15-16, about a million a year over the first uh, 10 years of the measure, and a projected 11.4 million till the end of the measure in 2024. Another feature, uh, the other half of our local and major infrastructure program is, is major roads. Uh, we've been able to complete improvements on Sir Francis Drake through West Marin, uh, 4th Street West End in San Rafael. You'll see Miller Avenue under construction right now, substantially funded by the $13.4 million from Measure A. Of course, the project that the county's working on, on Drake, between 101 and the town of Ross, and then finally improvements that are being addressed on Nevada Boulevard up in the city of Nevada. There's a second major road project planned for West Marin, a section of Sir Francis Drake from Lagunitas to Wild Iris Drive. And that project is currently being engineered and designed, so stay tuned for Measure A working even more on the Drake Corridor. The last thing I wanted to mention is our award-winning Safe Routes to School program. Uh, the program has three essential features, uh, education and encouragement, safe pathways or infrastructure projects, and crossing guards. Uh, we're currently engaged in safe routes in um, over, uh, I think we're up to about 63 schools here in Marin County where we're able to implement education, awareness, training on walking and biking, again, to try and encourage uh, single occupant drivers from uh, not uh, bringing their kids to school every day. We have 82 crossing guards that are helping that biking and walking activity. Um, we have a number of safe pathway projects that we've been able to grant funds to the county for implementation. You can see a list here of some of the various school sites that we were able to complete projects. In our first round of funding in fiscal year 10-11, these were completed and a second round of funding here in fiscal year 14-15. Um, the last thing I wanted to address is uh, elements of outreach that have been conducted by TAM. Uh, so back in 2015, we did outreach in accordance with an outreach plan the TAM board adopted. 
around the regional transportation plan. We had over 600 surveys, we had several community workshops, and we were able to capture what the public uh, believed were high priority improvements here in Marin. You can see a list of those right here. At that point in time, congestion relief and local road maintenance school bus service were the top priorities for spending out of that effort. This is from the July 2015 report that was presented to the TAM board. We'll make sure we get this back up on our website in the next, uh, in the next couple days. Here in 2016, as part of the strategic vision plan, we took the information we learned from the regional transportation plan and we conducted yet another round of outreach associated with the vision plan. The survey and the results were sent to over 400 unique email addresses, including organizations here in Marin. We distributed it through city clerks uh, who posted it on Nextdoor and through their Facebook pages. We got over 3,800 results. Um, this outreach is yet another data set, uh, including the outreach in 2015, the vision plan outreach, and up, an upcoming poll that the board approved and we will be conducting in May. These will all three be captured in the strategic vision plan and you'll be seeing an early draft of that in May as well. Um, the survey uh, was open-ended uh, we wanted to make sure that it was available for anyone regardless of computer ownership. Respondents might share a computer such as a library or school sites. There were 916 surveys that had common IP addresses. Uh, the team reviewed each of those surveys and if the survey was unique, it was deemed um, of value and valid. If the survey was a repeat, it was discarded. So we did a lot of correcting for repeat IP addresses. Um, the survey, again, is going to be combined with results from 2015 and the upcoming poll to further inform the TAM board regarding what the public believes is valuable. What are they uh, looking at in terms of priorities for transportation in the future? Um, this is an answer to one of the questions in the survey. The full survey result will be included in the strategic vision plan coming up here in May. What would make a better future in Marin? And you can see uh, what we got as results. Uh, note that 85% of the respondents uh, used uh, a car as their primary mode of transportation. So um, we got mostly folks that, uh, that uh, drove in terms of respondents to the survey. Um, uh, we have a process underway regarding considering renewal of our Measure A sales tax. Passed in 2004, it expires in March 31st of 2025. So it's uh, got about eight years remaining. We've gone through a process of briefing our cities and towns. We're going to be conducting a poll in early June. That TAM board meeting is currently scheduled for June 1st. The TAM board will consider whether to take the next step of forming an expenditure plan advisory committee, looking at, at how do we repackage our existing sales tax measure or grow our sales tax to address current needs. That draft expenditure plan will go back out to each city, town, and the county for approval in the spring. Those expenditure plan advisory committee meetings, if the board decides to continue, uh, will be open public meetings and will be seeking input from anyone that uh, wants to come. Uh, the committee itself will be a uh, broad representation of um, both uh, residents and interest groups here in Marin County. Uh, that completes our brief report and we'd be glad to answer any questions. Any questions? Yes. Uh, so, so Diane, just a quick question. Back on a, one of your early slides uh, was about delay on Marin Highway 101. And I noticed that the last uh, year for which data was presented was 2014. Right. And I wondered if we had anything recent. You know, obviously you just did that, had that fantastic study of where cars are traveling to and from completed. Is there any more up-to-date information on delays? Uh, delay continues, <laughs> I think. We know that part. Well, one thing, <laughs> for sure. And we are looking at uh, trying to capture both delay statistics and ramp statistics because we also right. have used a chart mm -hmm. showing the growth in traffic getting on the highway. Right. 
uh, as well as to a lot of uh, information about our local road corridors from right. that recent study. Right. So we'll be uh, developing updated material. Super. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? A uh, question that, that I had was if we, if we go out uh, for this measure in 2018, does that mean then that we still we getting the funding from the old sales tax as well as the new one until 2025? Uh, well, I think this is something for the board to consider. Uh, w w as staff, we're looking at bringing several scenarios forward. A continuation of the existing sales tax beyond March 31st, 2025 is one option. Growing the sales tax is another. Whether that starts, you know, following the vote or that starts at the end of the current measure is something else for the board to consider. So we got a bunch of policy elements to consider and bring forward for a lot of, lot of more discussion. 